This is the beginning of, of the quantum theory of the atom. Now, if you recall at the beginning of the semester, with the Rutherford model of the atom, we had we had a nucleus. Our model of the atoms consists of a nucleus where most of the mass and a positive charge is located and we and we, we, we know now that the that most of that mass is due to the neutrons and the protons and the positive charge is due to the protons that exist within the nucleus. So then the, the nucleus as the mass and the positive charge is concentrated. The other parts of the atom, including the electrons, electrons exist outside the nucleus. And our real question with this chapter, sort of a, a big, uh, something to keep in mind about what we're trying to answer with this chapter, is, is how are electrons distributed in space? Distributed in space around an atom. That's really the what we're what we're what we're going to be thinking about with this section of the of the uh, of the class. So how are electrons distributed in space? And the reason that this is important, you might say, well, why, why do we need to know this? Well, electrons, as we already have seen somewhat, are really central when it comes to chemical reactions and bonding what we'll see in, in next chapters. And that's going to help us, knowing where electrons are and how they're distributed around an atom, in an atom, is going to help us answer these questions. All right. Now, to be able to answer these questions, what we need to be able to do is we're first going to look at um, light. And oftentimes... It's very convenient, and, and something that we oftentimes do is we think of light, and and uh, um, we think of light as being a wave. Okay, now now for starters, light is electromagnetic radiation, and it can be described as a as a as a wave. Okay, so so light is electromagnetic radiation. And we can describe it in one sense as a wave. Okay. To be able to build our vocabulary for talking about light as a wave, let's think about a wave and look at the, at the different parts of a wave. Okay. So if we have our, our wave here, the different parts of the wave that you've probably seen before in, in say, a physics class or, or possibly even a chemistry class, um, First things is is the, a wave has an amplitude, the height of the wave, right? Okay, the intensity of the wave. If it's a very tall wave, we would say it's got a high amplitude or it's very intense. Okay. Um, we don't really deal with amplitude so much, but I want, do want to point out that that's the case. Another another um, property of a wave would be the wavelength, and we can measure that in any any way. We could say, look at from the very peak of uh, a wave to the next peak, the same position, and that would be the wavelength. We could also think of the wavelength as being the bottom here to here for example, okay, either of those could be the wavelength, they're going to have the same value. For wavelength, we're going to use a symbol, small Greek letter, lambda. That will be wavelength. Okay, wavelengths, much like you might expect, has a, has a measure of length. Um, so we'll Sometimes use we we'll use meters as our base unit, but we'll oftentimes see something like, say, millimeters, nanometers, or so on, to be able to describe 
the wavelength of our electromagnetic radiation. Okay, another means of thinking about uh, a wave is instead of looking at the peak to peak or trough to trough or, or any two points that are the same between the wave would be to look at something called the frequency. Okay, a frequency is, is a good way to think about frequency is this, is let's say you're standing right here, okay, and the wave is going by you as it travels. And what you're doing with frequency is you're counting how many times the wave goes by you, how many times, say for example, this trough goes by in a given amount of time, okay? So frequency has units of, um, for us, we're going to use per second, so one over second. Sometimes you might see it written as seconds to the minus one, and it turns out that one over second has a unit of hertz, hz, okay? The unit of frequency, or, or the symbol for frequency that we use is nu, the small, small Greek letter nu, okay? And that will give us the relationships about or, or thinking about how, how light works. Now, if we think about the relationship between wavelength and frequency, right? If, if you have light at a given frequency, meaning it's traveling by at a specific specific interval, uh, or so many, so many waves are going by at a particular amount of time, that's going to be dictated by the wavelength, how far apart the waves are. Okay. And to relate those two things together, what we need to know is the speed at which the, the electromagnetic radiation is moving. Okay. One other, one other thing that we'll need to know is, is the speed of light in a vacuum. And we're going to use the letter C. So speed of light or ele electroma any ma electromagnetic radiation in a vacuum is going to be the letter C. That has a value of 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now, relating our frequency and wavelength to the speed of light is going to look like this. The speed is going to be equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So this, re this relationship, and th this is an equation you just need to know, memorize, and be able to use. This relationship, um, uh, the speed of light is constant throughout the universe. In, in, um, uh, and, and so uh, in a vacuum, th this is how fast electromagnetic radiation moves. And so we can, we can always do, um, we can always look at problems like that or, 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 or use this to figure out um, if you know the frequency, this is a constant, you can find the wavelength. So as an example, we could do something like this. Um, uh, light, here's an example, has, so, so uh, we could say red, a, a red light has a, has a um, uh, frequency of 3.91 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Remember, hertz is just, this, this is the same as one over second. And we want to know the wavelength in units of nanometers. All right, well, we can use our relationship here. So in, in essence, what we're given is, oh, we're given the frequency, we know the speed of light in the vacuum, and we can solve for the wavelength. So we can take our equation, rearrange, put in our values. Oops, that would be 10 to the 8th, not 10 to the minus 8. So that's meters per second. And here we have 3.91 times 10 to the 14 hertz, or per seconds, and this ends up giving us 
times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Or, moving this over, because we were asked to give our answers in terms of nanometers, 767 nanometers would be the answer. So if we have light of this frequency, we know it has this wavelength. We could also answer, ask the question if we have light of a certain wavelength, we can find the frequency. Quite simple, straightforward algebra using this equation and this constant. These are two things that you're going to have to know and memorize. I'll give you this constant on an exam, but if you're studying properly, you would use it enough so much that you would have it memorized anyway. Okay, so we have this uh, uh, idea of the wave nature of light, and let's, let's, think, and, uh, let's think about um, what's going on with light um, uh, the, with, with electromagnetic radiation in, in, in general. So I'm going to put up, so, so the electromagnetic spectrum, this is this is figure 7.5 in your textbook. And I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to look at this very, very quickly, but then we're going to make our own. So I can show you what you need to be able to know with respect to the electromagnetic spectrum. So the electromagnetic spectrum has, um, uh, consists of gamma rays, x-rays, and so on. And we go from there, um, uh, ultraviolet rays, visible light encompasses just a very tiny portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. And then we have infrared, microwave, radar, and so on. All right, so, so let's, let's look at this. So this is the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, we have gamma rays. We have X-rays, we have ultraviolet right, light, we have visible light, and that's going to go from uh, violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, then we have infrared, then we have microwaves, and radio waves. Okay, so as we what, no no so one thing that you should know is you should know the the the, the that gamma rays are are, are next to x-rays and so on but but what's more important and what makes this easier is that if we over on this end of the electromagnetic spectrum what we have here are very short wavelengths we have short wavelengths over here these have the highest frequency then They also have the most energy, and we'll see in a moment how energy is related to wavelength. But so, so these have the shortest wavelengths, the highest frequency, and the most energy. And we're going to move as we go. Radio waves, for example, have very long wavelengths. Oops, sorry, long wavelengths. They have the least amount of energy. And they have the uh, lowest frequency. OK, so now what do I expect you to know? OK, well, when we look at this, this uh, example here, so we know gamma rays, x-rays, and so on. We know where things are, where the visible spectrum is. Do I expect you to know that x-rays have a wavelength of one nanometer or 10 pi 100 picometers? Not necessarily. I don't necessarily expect you to be able to tell me that microwaves are a millimeter in length. But what I do expect you to be able to tell me is that X-rays have shorter wavelengths than infrared, or ultraviolet rays have shorter wavelengths than radio waves, and so on. And you should be able to tell me tell me these things. There are maybe some homework questions where you need to know the wavelengths of, of of, uh, of various um, uh, parts of electromagnetic spectrum, but really what I need you to do is have a very qualitative view of, of, of the relationships between these. Okay.